Comrades, I am Admiral Andre and welcome back to Real Politics. This is the long awaited second series in which I will be taking on Turkey, which of course won the popular vote a while back. So without any ado, let's get going. I'll just make the note that this is now version 1.45, as you can see in the bottom left there. So this is the most recent version of this game as by, uh, on the date of this recording. So hopefully we'll see some new things in this series. Let's see, new game. Ah uh, yes, there's the lobby boy again who's making some trouble in Korea these days, specifically the northern part. Interestingly enough, I have to say I didn't notice this before, uh, since it's been such a long time since we've started the South African series, but Turkey is actually one of the suggested countries for the, uh, well, I guess for any of the campaigns here, since it's a, it's a very interesting rising power in the world today. So let's go to Turkey and for the first time we actually have to make a choice here. With South Africa of course we didn't have to, we didn't have the option to choose because there was only the grand campaign. If we take for example Libya there you, uh, you'll see it's again only the grand campaign is available. But because Turkey is one of the uh, I would almost say focus countries of this period. We have actually several options here. I think still I'll take the grand campaign, but it might be worthwhile just to have a look at the others. So the grand campaign, of course, and I think, of course, we'll start with uh, 2020 again. The world is not enough. It could be interesting to go to 2050. Let's just have a quick look at that. Of course, things are totally different in that era. And we can see here Turkey has already taken over parts of the Middle East. So, no, I want to do that myself. So let's go back to 2020 and uh, just find Turkey again. And see, lead a country of your choosing to glory in the sandbox scenario set in the 21st century. The player with the highest score by 2100 is the winner. So this time I'll have to keep that in mind if we are to actually come out number one at the end of this eight year period. In the case of a draw, total GDP will be compared. The other options are go west. So you see there's two military options and one diplomatic option, which is actually quite interesting. So the first military option for Turkey is to go west. The Ottoman Empire used to rule a huge chunk of Europe in past centuries. Turkey will soon make everyone in the Balkans tremble in awe before us. Take control of Greece, Bulgaria, Macedonia, Kosovo and Serbia before 2035. So we would have 15 years for that. Strange they don't include Albania there or uh, Bosnia and so on. I think all of that was part of the Ottoman Empire before. In any case, the second military option is to go south, restore Turkish glory to the Arabian Peninsula. Before 2035, take control of the lands of Mashriq, that's an excellent objective, I think, Syria, Lebanon, Jordan and Iraq. So generally, if I had to choose between those two, I would choose to go south because this is an area in the world that is sorely in need of some stability. And I think Turkey can provide that. Well, at least if it's uh, under my rule, let's say. The other option, uh, the diplomatic one, Turkish Cyprus, of course, that is a long standing issue in international politics with the north being dominated by Turkey and the south, of course, being Cyprus proper there, or at least an independent Cyprus. Bring freedom to our countrymen in Cyprus. Conquer and release it as a free country before 2025, which is a very soon, but I think very easy as well, because it's only one country here. And keep it safe until 2032. To make sure we're covered from eventual sea attack from the Arabian Peninsula, create and maintain a block with Egypt. So that's also where the diplomacy comes in. But I'm going to take the grand campaign. I think we could do any of these others and then just continue once the goal has been achieved. But I think just the freedom of the grand campaign is always something nice because we never know how things will 
evolve throughout the game. Now, I think the theme for this, uh, to borrow a recent phrase for this Let's Play, will be make the Ottoman Empire great again. So let's just hope we can do it uh, in a good way. So at any rate, the Ottoman Empire, of course, ruled much of the Balkans and so on. So that will all be part of my goal, even parts of North Africa. So re retaking that and, of course, the, the entire Arabian Peninsula and all of that as well. Uh, so retaking that is a, a core goal, apart from this high score by 2100. I'm not sure again if that will be possible. I'm sure that it would be if I just, you know, keep that in mind from the beginning. But uh, yes, so of course we can make up our own rules as we go along. So they say here Turkey is authoritarian, its economy is actually very good and its military is even better and it's not in a block. If we look at South Africa, we could see there we started off with a bit of a weaker start actually. So this should be a bit easier in the beginning. So let's go. And there we are. So let's pause for a moment, just uh, get our bearings here. So it is uh, the first month of 2020 and let's have a look at what's happening in Turkey itself. So of course our culture is Turkish and our civilization is Islamic. So I think that will make it quite easy to incorporate much of the Middle East here. Uh, let's just go back there. Next election. So we're one year away from the election. And we are of course authoritarian but it is trending downwards. So... I'm happy with the way things are at the moment. I'm not too worried, but uh, it will change as we go along. Interventionism is rising. It's now 8 and it's on the way to 14. Personal control is actually quite high. It's 14, but it's uh, on the way to 7 now. Militarism is very high, which is actually where I want to keep it, uh, taking the lessons from South Africa forward into this game. But it is decreasing rapidly there. So we'll see if we can't make it rise again. Population growth is very low actually. Surprisingly low. Uh, maybe we can see if there's possibly some deals that we can make to encourage some immigration. 8,500 population. And let's see. Development index. It looks so low now after having played with South Africa and getting it so high. So anyway, we start with 40. Implementation time is reduced, army building time is reduced, that's always helpful. And it is not in a block and there's zero warmonger, that's interesting to see. I'm used to a very high warmonger score and I think we will repeat history in that sense. Money, uh, let's look at this, yes, it's the same up here. The monthly balance is only 22, which is frighteningly low actually, again, coming with the experience of South Africa where we had thousands per month and uh, now we start with 22 again. There is some debt as well so first priority is to get rid of it as quickly as we can I think. So look at that the monthly balance is 17 and our debt cost is uh, oh, the debt cost is 17 and the monthly balance is 22 so it's almost the same as our income so we're almost paying 100% of our income on uh, debt repayments taxes are quite low we might have to ra uh, raise that a little bit uh, GDP growth tax unhappiness stock markets that we will have to look at in a moment GDP size is 1200 and there is a quite a healthy growth actually of 0.46 and the economy is in an upswing right now so it is actually a good time to start the game. Unemployment rate is 15% but it is going down so at least that's a good thing that means I won't have to worry about it too much. And the mil mineral resources uh, 75 we're using 44 and we still have 31 available so Again, at least there is a surplus, but I know from experience, even with the surplus, we can run into trouble. So we'll just have to keep an eye on that. Our max unit capacity, we're actually surpassing that now, 64 out of 52. So I'll leave it if I can, but I'm sure we're paying extra maintenance on that. But uh, it might be better to disband some of the units there, actually. I think we should. Let's have a look at that. 
24 infantry, 16 armor and 16 aircraft. That is actually a very good uh, number to start with. Uh, if you remember in southern Africa, all of the countries that we fought there, many of them had one aircraft and, you know, it, it wasn't looking like this. There's two transports as well. Of course, we couldn't buy more. That's the thing. There was a comment a while back on one of my older videos about why didn't I just buy more. There isn't an option to buy more unless we have the transporter project. But of course now I don't have to worry about it. Let's just see anything else we could buy. But right now I think we need to discard some of that. So actually let's get rid of two of our ships. What if I just press the negative there? No, it just brings us back here. I think we should, just because we're starting off without the uh, budget surplus that I would like us to have. Uh, I don't want to reduce this too much. Let's say by four. It's almost there. Armor. Let's reduce it by four as well. I think we'd still be in a good position. And then just the last one. Let's see if I can take off two aircraft. That brings us back to the max capacity. I assume that there would be some kind of a penalty, uh, like in Europa Universalis, if you have more than the unit capacity that you can actually have. In any case, uh, yes, our money is now 35, so it's almost doubled there. It still isn't that much, but in any case... Let's have a look at uh, what's happening around us. Of course, I think Mashariq must be one of our early targets. Uh, of course, they're completely totalitarian and so on. Let's just look at their military. 28 and 6. Now, I'm sorry I got rid of that military just now. But in any case, we can always get it back if we start suffering from losses there. Let's just go back again. Yes, 28 and 6. And we have... 2012 and 14 that's actually uh, not as good as I would have hoped but I think we could still take them at least one province here so let's see what else right now I'm not going to bother with uh, the Balkans and Europe or anywhere else really I think the early priority must be to start with a stock exchange but of course we don't have the research for that so let's just have a look here we have high unemployment and we have the empty project slots Let's just see, did we get any tasks yet? No. Let's just let the clock run until they offer us a task. Maybe that in any case involves doing some research and then we could get a bonus for that. Just see, nothing is coming up. So let's just continue with the research. Stock exchange, critical. Do it. Costs, uh, we can afford that. Only five action points. I need to pay more attention to the action points in this playthrough. And the other one... Let's just have a look. What about military? That's the thing again. Last time I took a bit too long to uh, switch over to a manufacturing uh, military industry. We just imported everything. You see, it's the same here. We're actually importing our tanks. We need to get to this one, but that costs way too much. So I guess that's a moot point at this uh, junction here. Let's see, research center, we've got that already. We can't do anything else here. It costs too many action points. So let's go back to the economy. It's always a good thing to strengthen that. Modernization here, yes. I think we need some modernization in Turkey, so let's do that. Remove unnecessary financial ballast by selling or renting redundant national infrastructure. Do it. We shall make the Ottoman empire great again uh, it's not the ottoman empire yet but it will be so let's see what else can we do there's our task let's actually have a look at it just pause there's three of them first one increase the economic development level by increasing gdp per capita our uh, country could use some general improvement introduce the mobilization procedures project and the infrastructure three project so I guess we already have one and two so that will be the next things that we research at least it gives us some direction there now in terms of Mashariq 
I think we should deal with them even in this very first episode. It's probably going to uh, be a very bloody conflict, but I would like us to get them out of the picture as soon as possible. Even if we do that, they would still control several uh, provinces, I guess you would call them in this game. So Mosul, Baghdad, Damascus. Uh, if we could just get Mosul, maybe even Baghdad as well. I don't know. Don't want to be too ambitious, but at least one of them. Then uh, we can begin to weaken them. So let's do it. What's our relationship with them? Shouldn't be actually very high. 58. Uh, we can work with that. So for war, of course, we need it to be 30. So decreasing it will bring it down by... 30. That's fine. Do it. It's very cheap as well. Another early priority, I think, is to create a block. And even though eventually, if we really want to recreate the Ottoman Empire, we're going to have to take over Egypt, or at least the northern part of it, then uh, I think at this point we can ally with them. Uh, we can always count that as being part of the Ottoman Empire, in a sense. What will it take? missing action points and all that at least we can begin improving relations with them because I know in the last South African game Egypt had a long-standing block of its own and I don't want anyone else to have a competing block in the Middle East we are supposed to be the Middle Eastern superpower here so Mashriq now hates us as well they should and uh, let's do this thing it is going to be a bloody conflict, but I'm okay with that because these are terrorists and we have to wipe them out. So do it and assign everything. And let's begin. Oh, this is totally different now. Previously we had to scroll down the middle. Let's see, where is the secure front? We need to do that just so they don't start running into Turkey. Oh, I hope this wasn't a bad idea. It's not looking well, sort of failure to improve relations with Egypt, that's unfortunate. Okay, it's going up now. Okay, do it next. Um, okay, at least the game is paused so I can just have a look here. I think let's do the easy one first, supply lines capture. At least it looks less deadly, so I suppose it's easier in that sense. We are losing a bit of money now. We've been invited into a stock exchange. By whom? Hold on. We've been invited into the stock exchange. I've never seen that before. What could it mean? Issue embargo, local center, because we still don't have the re uh, research there. There's nowhere I can accept an invitation. Oh well. Probably missing something. Pretty much preoccupied with the war right now. And since the rest of the world still doesn't do anything about Mashrik, I think we should be the ones to do it. This is our backyard anyway. And this time I have to be really careful. I would still like to be able to see the uh, military technology level of our opponents because I think that's where we went a bit, uh, you know, uh, awry with the uh, American invasion. Just because their military technology was, I'm assuming, far better than ours, so even our superior numbers didn't really help us. It was pretty much just because they kept giving up their... Uh, battles that we manage to pretty much win each time. Let's do an airstrike. They don't really have a lot of armor so I'm quite pleased about that. I'm sure they're mobilizing more troops as we speak but hopefully we can just knock a few out before then. And we must also at some point, again, it's going to be a long technological journey to get there, but become a nuclear power ourselves. Red Alliance destroyed. I don't even know who was in the Red Alliance. 
increased development tasks completed so that happened anyway nothing was even finished it's just I guess because of reducing unemployment and economic growth happening in the background that was a close call operation lost okay never mind that let's do a frontal advance so yes because uh, the whole nuclear thing because we want to take over Israel at some point that was part of the uh, Ottoman Empire capture the roads then that's an equal one you know it's obviously quite difficult to fight against an entrenched terrorist force so yes we can expect several of these lost operations but it shall be as it will be at least we're leading uh, by 23 percent at this point come on make turkey great again or oh, the ottoman empire eventually I think I'll do the same thing that I did with the previous series in the sense that I'm leaving it for the most part on normal speed. Going at fast speed means I'm going to miss even more things than usual, so I just prefer to keep it on the slower speed. Another loss. I'm perfectly fine with that. I'm not sweating. Take the garrisons again, and as we sustain losses, we should replace them. Just get about six more infantry and however many more armor that we can get. At this point, in any case, I'm not seeking a 100% victory. I just want enough to liberate one of the provinces under their control. And then we can attack them again once the truce expires. And I know there's a lot of things in the news up here that I need to pay more attention to. But let's wait for the war to finish. Last again, try something different. I can't see that the military technology can be the issue here. There we go, at least they gave up on that one. Let's see if we can take the guard posts. Okay, I can tell the computer to do this, but I prefer to do it myself. So at least while that's now being implemented, we can just have a look around the map and see if there's any offers here that might expire. Doesn't really... Oh, Congo and Angola are at war. First time I see that in the last game, no countries in Africa really went to war with each other. Of course, with the exception of us and all our neighbors. But uh, Sudan and South Sudan, South Sudan was basically the only internal war in Africa that uh, started without my intervention. And we're going to not yet lose that one. Okay, we did. Never mind that. Do the breakthrough. And just do that in the background for now. So maybe this is part of the AI being somewhat different or more aggressive or something like that. Canada's in the US block, it seems. Maybe I can just pause and have a look through these messages now. So that's just the infantry. I need to send them to the front line. Jordan, there we go. Jordan immediately joined the block of Egypt. So we're going to have to destroy them. They are just our main rivals now. Infantry destroyed, Luxembourg joined France, Canada joined the US, Armour, Switzerland joined Germany, Malaysia, Indonesia, Bangladesh uh, joined India. Infantry, new task there, I just have to have a look at that. North Korea left the block of China, I don't see how that will work out well for them. War between, of course, we've seen that one, that's us, and new task. Let's just have a look at the tasks. Our country could use the financial sector. Choose your destiny and activate either the religious order, army state, or the financial sector supremacy project. I like this, you know, the whole destiny thing. Now, I'm not going to choose the religious order, and I don't think 
I don't know, I'm torn between the last two, army, state and financial sector. Without the financial strength, we can't sustain a strong army and country anyway, so I think we might go the financial way. Warfare through money. What's that saying that war takes three things? Money, money and more money. So that's something to keep in mind. There we go, we won that one. Take the airstrike again, it's saying hi now. R&D cooperation, pause. Let's just zoom out, the gunfire is getting a bit loud there. Global fundraising ordered by the United Nations Security Council. Ah, the days when we were actually in that Security Council. Ah, let me reminisce for a moment. To create an International Research and Development Institute. The most generous donor will host the main headquarters of the Institute. Guess who's going to host that Institute? It's going to be in the greatest city on Earth, which is, of course, Istanbul. So, we have to get this. Score and so on. Yes, score is now critically important. So... 200 it's about 10 percent of our total savings but we must do it the action points oh no the action points is the one that i was looking at now so it's more than 10 percent of the money oh well do it anyway let's be reckless for a good cause anyway i have to say i missed this game the last few weeks Project implemented, stock exchange, so let's have a look, can we do anything here now, we still have to get the local financial center, that's the next one, money, oh, oof, that's way too much, no, sorry, 6,000, is there anything else, what did they ask us to do, the infrastructure 3, we can do that then, the money, uh, well, I guess we're just going to have to go deeper into debt right now, be it as it may. I've dug us out of a deeper debt than that before. And we're still making a profit of nine every month, so at least that's something. There's Sudan and South Sudan at war again, and we know how that's going to end. I don't think I've ever won an airstrike armor destruction operation oh well let's just stick to what we know let's do the frontal advance again and then i'll have a look at the uh, options that we can have for settling let's just stop for a moment iraq wants money but i don't think i can give them that or is it action points our economy could use a little kick so it will cost us action points our hdi goes down down for a while but our relations that's really the only thing we're getting out of that is better relations for two years no i don't think so maybe some other time almost done with the uh, economy modernization oh yes yeah, stop for a moment we have to reassign all the new troops Okay, let's have a look what else we can do. Super rails theory sounds so lovely, but how much does it cost? Hey, we can actually afford it, strangely enough. Develop plans for the layout and construction of a railroad network. This reminds me of transport fever again. I was thinking about that also the last few days. Maybe I should at some point start another series of that, now that they've uh, released that big patch there. In any case, let's do it. I want Turkey to have super rails and to be a world leader in train transport. So, you know, all of those fancy trains that the Chinese and the Japanese are uh, boasting, we must also have that. Military Operation 1, so let's pause for a moment. Uh-oh. That's just, of course, my reminder there that I shouldn't ramble too much. In any case, we can just wrap things up. Is that really the end already of the first episode? Wow, things are going too fast. In any case, let's have a look at the piece here. Um, acquire a province. Warmonger score be damned. 
Let's have a look. Mosul will ask for 54%. Hmm, how much do we have at the moment? Cancel. I keep forgetting to look before I do this sort of thing. Now I can't even click on it. What's happening? Well, that's a mystery. I can't actually get back into the war now, even if I unpause the game. It must have something to do with uh, me exiting and coming back into the game. Oh well, I'll sort that out. I'll just save it and reload it, of course, for the next episode. And then also we have to continue with the R&D cooperation. So it's actually a good point to leave things off. Thank you for watching and uh, I'm very much looking forward to starting off this uh, journey again. I've thoroughly enjoyed the South African one. So let's see if we can really make Turkey great. Well, I won't say great again because then I'm implying that Turkey is not great already. So let's rather say the Ottoman Empire great again. So see you in the next episode and as always have a fantastic day.